Hey there, my name is Mahdi and welcome to this video. In the world of mobile app development, Flutter is a rising star, a powerful tool that allows developers to create amazing apps for Android, iOS, web and desktop just using one code base. I can say that in the new year, Flutter's future looks even brighter with exciting new features and ever-growing community of developers. Let me give you some great news. You can join our Flutter community on Telegram. Simply join this group to stay in contact with other Flutter developers to learn from each other and to become a better Flutter developer. So don't forget and join now. So let's get started. Guys, I don't want to explain what Flutter is or why we should choose Flutter. We all know that Flutter is the best. So I'm going to tell you how to learn Flutter. What to start with first? Flutter is fast and easy. If you are familiar with Java or any object-oriented language, you are good to go. But I strongly recommend that you should have the basic knowledge of Dart. So in the first step, you should learn the Dart language because Flutter uses Dart language and Dart uses OOP concepts or object-oriented programming concepts. As I said, if you are familiar with object-oriented language like Java, you can learn Flutter directly, but I recommend that you to learn Dart as well. You don't need to spend money to learn Dart. With these courses that I introduce here, you can easily learn Dart completely. I put the link of the, all these videos in the description so you can easily find the courses. You can also use the official Dart document to learn Dart, which teaches you step by step. But if you are a beginner and want to learn programming, I recommend you use the YouTube courses that I introduced to you. Dart is a wide language and will take time to master. And to start Flutter, you don't need to learn Dart completely. And by learning the basics of Dart, you can easily jump to Flutter. I have listed here the basic topics you need to learn in Dart. So first, learn these topics, then jump into Flutter. Guys, these are very simple and you can learn easily, so go ahead. After learning the basics of Dart, it's time to learn Flutter. As you know, to work with Flutter and learn Flutter, the first thing you have to do is to install Flutter. To do this, the best source that I can introduce to you is the Flutter document for installing it, which fully explains how to install Flutter for each operating system. I put all the resource links in the video description so you can easily find and use them. And if you have a problem in installing Flutter, you can leave a comment and I will definitely guide you to solve your problem. After installing Flutter, you need to set up an editor. I prefer to use VS Code or Android Studio. Android Studio has many features but it is heavy and you need to have a good system. And I prefer to use VS Code. You can use this Flutter document to set up the editor. After installing Flutter and Editor, now it's time to learn. To learn Flutter, I suggest you to use this video. You can almost learn Flutter with this video. If you don't want to use videos, I recommend these two sites for learning. The second one is Flutter's document and I can say that it has the best document among all frameworks. I say again that I will put the link of sources in the description of the video. In Flutter, the first thing you should get familiar with is a widget. Basically, everything you see in Flutter app is a widget. So first, you need to know what is widget in Flutter. I have given you an explanation here, but in order to know more what is the widget in Flutter, it is better to search. There is also a YouTube playlist called Widget of the Week, provided by the Flutter team that only talks about widgets in Flutter. After you understand what is the widget, you should know the difference between stateless and stateful widgets because most of the widgets we use are either stateless or stateful. The next step is to learn layout. Flutter allows us to create a layout by composing multiple widgets to build more complex widgets. For example, we can see that the blue image that shows three icons with a label under each one. In the second image, we can see the visual layout of the first image. This image shows a row of three columns and these columns contain an icon and label. The best document that I can introduce to you is the Flutter document which explains the layout completely and you can learn it easily. And I can also introduce this medium article which explains it step by step with examples and I really suggest you to use this as well. 
By learning layout, you have gone halfway to learn UI in Flutter. After learning layout, you should learn design, theming, interactivity, assets, media, navigation, routing, and finally animation and transition. These topics are simple and become much easier with Flutter document. To learn these topics, just go to the this URL in the Flutter document and select the topics you want to learn from the user interface section and learn quickly. Until now, all the topics I told you were related to learning UI implementation. And by following these topics I told you, you can implement text, image, button, and many other things related to UI in Flutter. But UI implementation is not everything. In the next step, you should be able to implement the logic of the application. Now, what does logic mean? What I mean by logic is that you can fetch data from the local or server and display it to the user or get the data from the user and send it to the server or store it in the local database. Or for example, changing the state of the application by doing a specific task such as clicking on a button can be part of the logic of the application. To implement logic, you must first know what state management is. I suggest you first study Flutter's document about the state management to understand what is the purpose of the state management and then learn one of the available state management such as Block, Riverpod, or GEDEX, which I suggest you to learn Block. There are many resources to learn Block. You can use Block's own document or use this video. Also, there are many other courses on YouTube that you can use and learn Block easily. In the next step, you have to learn how to fetch data from the server and the internet and show it to the user. Fetching data from the internet is necessary for apps. To learn this, again, I have to introduce Flutter's document. Flutter's document is the best source for learning Flutter's basics. And for beginners, it is the best document that I can introduce. After you learn how to fetch data from the server and understand how to make a request to the server, you should learn how to parse the response that the server returns. To learn about this, you can refer to the serialization section in Flutter's documentation, or you can study this Medium article. I recommend both of them, and by reading one of them, you will fully understand what this story is about. In the next step, you should learn how to save the data in the user's phone. In other words, how can you create a local database in the user's phone? For this, you need libraries like Shared Preferences, which is a plugin for reading and writing simple key value pairs. You can use Shared Preferences to store a key value such as a user token or a phone number. To store large amounts of data, you must learn SQLite database in Flutter, which is very simple. To learn SQLite, you can use this video or you can even use Flutter's document which explains it step by step. I will put the resources link which I introduced here in the video description, so don't worry. After learning the topics that I have told you so far, we can almost say that you will become a Flutter developer. But this is not enough and you have to learn other topics to become a real Flutter developer to get hired. One of these topics is Firebase. As a Flutter developer, you must learn how to use Firebase in Flutter. To learn Firebase, you can go to the Flutter Fire website or use this course on YouTube, which is really a complete course. In addition to learning Firebase, you should learn how to work with the version controller. The most famous version controller is GitLab, so you should know how to work with GitLab. You should also learn CI/CD, which you can learn along with GitLab. There are many resources for learning GitLab, and this is not specific to Flutter, but I will introduce a resource for you in the video description. And finally, if you really want to become a senior Flutter developer, you must learn architectures such as Clean Architecture and DDD, and you must learn how to write tests for your codes. And the most important of these, you should learn design patterns and solid principles in Dart, which are very important. To learn clean architecture and test writing, you can use these two videos on our own channel, or you can search on YouTube where there are many videos about these topics. I hope you success in becoming a Flutter developer and get your first job soon. And remember to never give up. Learn to rest, but don't give up.